You don't need me to tell you about what we've been through in 2020. I'm here to talk about 2021 and what that might look like for all of us. Well, the first thing to remember is the pandemic actually will end. At some time in the future, epidemiologists will no longer be regulars on news programs, public spaces will no longer be marked with circles every six feet, and March will be a month of madness once again. What will be left and what will we face on the other side of COVID? What role will technology play in higher education's recovery? Will the pandemic prove to be higher education's extinction event? Will our ecosystem emerge stronger and fitter for the future? Might both be true? These are the questions the 2020-21 EDUCAUS IT Issues Panel has explored in anticipation of 2021. Throughout the pandemic, we've all learned a different way to plan. We've learned the futility of making long-term plans to mitigate a disease that's still poorly understood and complex. We've also learned about how useful scenarios can be when we have to plan in the face of enormous uncertainty. Scenarios help us anticipate alternative futures that we can plan for, so we're prepared not only for what we might hope or dread, but also for what actually happens. This year, EDUCAUSE took a different approach to the IT Issues Project. You won't find a top 10 IT issues list for 2021. Our planning horizons are so short now, so we thought a single list of top IT issues was too constraining. And instead, we took our cues from you, and we used a scenario approach to consider three different potential ways institutions might emerge from the pandemic. This year, we offer three top IT issues lists instead of one, and we examine the top five issues within each of three scenarios. Now to do that, we made three assumptions. Our first assumption is that the pandemic will begin to resolve sometime in 2021. That means that one or more effective vaccines will become available and distributed. And in fact, we're seeing signs that make that look pretty likely. Our second assumption, that our scenarios need to be high level views of possible recovery visions. The three scenarios we chose are very general, and they're based on how an institution's culture, vision, and business model might influence its approach to recovery. The scenarios we chose were, number one, restore. We'll be focused on figuring out what to do to get back to where we were before the pandemic. Number two, evolve. We'll be focused on adapting to the new normal. And number three, transform. We will be focused on redefining our institution and on taking an active role in creating the innovative future of higher education. Our third and last assumption is that a single scenario is probably not going to fit too many institutions. One of the scenarios might fit financial health, and maybe you'll need another one that will be right for education and academic work. So we needed to give our survey respondents a lot of flexibility in picking the issues. So here's what we did. First, our IT issues panel prioritized 19 potential top IT issues for 2021. Now that's the same as every year when they pick about 15 to 20 issues for members to vote on. What was different about this year was that the panelists created three versions of each issue, one for each scenario. And then our survey asked IT leaders to first pick their preferred scenario-based version of each of the 19 potential issues, and then prioritize the 19 issue versions they had picked. We used the survey results to identify the top five IT issues for each of the three scenarios. And here they are. As you scan this table, look at all the overlap between the restore and evolve issues. They have four issues in common. And of course, details under each common issue are very different. And when we walk through each issue, you'll be able to see those differences more clearly. And now, look at the issues in Transform. They really stand on their own, don't they? And collectively, they cover a strategic approach to using technology to transform the institution. What will be left? And what will we face on the other side of COVID? And what role will technology play in higher education's recovery? Put yourself for the next few minutes in the post-pandemic future and reflect with the IT Issues Panel on what it might bring. Now, 
We don't have a ton of time today, and I think it'll get a little tedious if I try to walk through all 15 issues. The Restore issues are focused on getting back to where we were before the pandemic. Well, you were around then at the beginning of 2020, so you know what that looks like. So we'll just breeze through them today by listening to some remarks from our panelists, and then we'll move on to the other scenarios. You can always read the IT Issues article for the details about Restore. The Restore theme is a story of institutional survival. The biggest focus in Restore was on the institution's pre-pandemic financial health. Now, look at the issues under Restore, two finance-related issues, cost management and financial health. And in fact, you'll soon see that even the information security issue is qualified by the need to be budget conscious. The institutions at greatest financial risk may also be those whose students are struggling the most. Institutions choosing the Restore version of issues were also focused on helping their students gain access to institutional resources and learning anywhere, anytime. We can't just do everything that we've been doing a little less. We need to figure out what are the things that we can still go 100% on. Um, and what are the things where maybe if they aren't done at all anymore, the impact will be least. Um, I think we run the risk of becoming altogether mediocre if we kind of do everything in a partial way. You should all be learning online. And that's, this is gonna be what it's like even for the most traditional places, I think. The world has changed for everyone. Everyone is on Zoom, is, get, is getting used to using that. So recognizing that, but I think, so it's really, as you said, Jay, getting back to concentrating on our strengths in that context. Getting back to where we were means that the reliance on IT has been uh, made very visible, right? Um, but it also has shown its shortcomings. Um, now we know that we need to be prepared for the next pandemic or other interruptions in ways that we maybe not had contemplated before. Uh, our disaster recovery before was not necessarily a pandemic. We were sort of assuming that online was sort of a self-selecting population of people who had the, the ability to access and wanted to do that. Um, and what we're realizing is that it, in terms of the sorts of audiences that could be served with that, um, being able to be better at serving people remotely and doing that even in a place where it's not necessary because of a pandemic um, can still create opportunities for people who don't have the time flexibility, who don't have the transportation capabilities to be able to come onto campus on a regular basis. And so I think the the longer the pandemic goes on the the more pervasive what i was calling these permanent changes will be so it's it's already causing some some institutions to kind of rethink their 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 value proposition their business model the longer this goes on um the more it's it's going to be gonna, gonna happen i i work at a at a, a, a university that has a hospital and a lot of things where a the the whole premise was being there physically that you can't you know you can't get a doctor degree remotely let's look at the evolve scenario now and spend a little more time with those issues the set of evolve issues describe a student-centric institution that is managing its primary risks these are institutions that will choose to incorporate the impact and lessons of the pandemic into their culture and vision. Three of the top five Evolve issues emphasize the student experience. This type of institution is adapting to students' needs instead of expecting students to adapt to the institution. Three pillars of student experience are represented, attaining academic and career goals, equity and access, and best practices in technology-enabled teaching and learning. The two remaining Evolve issues focus on managing two pervasive institutional risks, information security and financial health. Information security concerns subsided a bit in the early weeks of the pandemic, but they began to intensify in the latter months of 2020. This is a risk that can't be overcome or neglected. Institution student success focus has evolved during the pandemic. There's more emphasis on how important digital infrastructure is. 
Students are using technology more and in more ways now, and advisors ramped up use of online video advising, chat, and other technology solutions to reach students when face-to-face -face contact wasn't possible. All that is producing new and more data about students, and that offers new opportunities to understand students' progress and give them feedback and support. But just remember that using more data about students will increase privacy challenges too. In 2021, many students will be in worse condition to continue their education, let alone thrive. Those who are worst off before the pandemic will have suffered the most. Even though institutions will have fewer resources, students will need them more than ever before. In many ways, the pandemic has just accelerated the change that was already underway. All of the challenges and also the heavy reliance on technology. Some institutions were already planning a strong move to online advising and student services, and now they're embracing it much faster than planned. A prolonged pandemic will just continue the accelerated pace of change. So when I think of the new normal, what I'm really thinking is opportunities to empower students and to create more accountability, especially for the adult learner. So I think it's a great opportunity to create some transparency for these students. So they have access to their own data. They have access to their progress within the program. Um, perhaps they have access to compare themselves to other students so they know how they're tracking against students and can kind of self-reflect and um, self-adjust. Institutional leaders have evolved from treating student success as a student responsibility to treating it as an institutional responsibility. A similar shift is now happening with equitable access to education. Rather than assuming that students have access, leaders are recognizing that it's the institution's job to provide that access. The pandemic has shown just how deep the digital divide is and how many people are on the wrong side of it. Equitable access to education means equitable access to a baseline level of technology and connectivity. This may be a time when many stakeholders across our ecosystem partner to address those needs. A prolonged pandemic will motivate institutions to instill more permanent solutions. Students' digital equity needs will need to be understood and accommodated based on their circumstances and their educational goals. Students in degree programs that require laboratory access or other learning environments that aren't possible to stimulate digitally will need different accommodations. I mean, we have this crisis. What can we do because of this crisis that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to do? And I think that um, some of those partnerships are now going to be possible because everyone's uh, been it's become clear to everybody just how severe these problems are and how much we need to bring people together and make sure that there is a much greater level of equity. The pandemic has forced faculty, instructional technologists, librarians, and others to interrogate every aspect of teaching and learning to identify what matters most. They'll be ready to help build the 2020 plus era of higher education. Institutions need to reconceive learning experiences to leverage the strengths and minimize the weaknesses of digital and physical and blend them to maximize learning. This change won't happen on its own though. Faculty will need continued help transitioning their courses to meet their students' expectations. And learning environments will need to adapt too. The pandemic fostered new and deeper collaborations among instructional technologists, digital pedagogy experts, librarians, faculty, and others. They'll help the institution evolve and adapt to the new normal. Accommodations to the pandemic may simply begin to feel like business as usual, but with much more severely constrained resources. Academic leaders will carefully analyze which courses and academic programs will reward the effort to move online, which warrant the risks and overhead of remaining face-to-face, -face, and which can no longer be continued at all. We're entering the interactive era of education, interactive and on-demand mm. era of edu education. So in the 2020 plus era, our students are expecting an on-demand interactive multimedia experience. We need to transform our courses to meet the needs of the current students using the technologies and methodologies that they're used to using. The toothpaste is out of the tube. Faculty and staff will expect to be able to continue to work from home and other off-campus locations. To evolve to the new normal, 
institutions should consider adding infrastructure and services to support secure collaboration and learning tools and to keep track of all the places data may be stored, transmitted, or used. Many institutions still lack a full-time dedicated information security lead, and this really should change. An information security officer provides more than just additional staffing. They also bring the expertise and focus needed to develop and implement a security strategy, one that's risk-based and proactive. And if the pandemic is not resolved in 2020, information security will need to support off-campus uses of data in a much more comprehensive and permanent way building upon uh, the strengths um, and weaknesses uh, that we have observed uh, while rapidly responding, uh, responding to the pandemic uh, in, in 2020, uh, we will have uh, ways to ensure uh, th that our operations uh, continue to be secure by employing new techniques. Leaders will need a lot of financial creativity to meet the demand for technology in 2021. IT leaders at some institutions are already collaborating, and that might be with alumni relations or on specific research initiatives to fund the development and delivery of new services and capabilities. Grants, support from technology solution providers and other companies, and partnerships with local communities and employers are all potential sources of funds and income. Of course, everybody will be competing at the same time for the same partnership and funding opportunities. The competition will be even more intense now. The opportunities may be there, but in limited supply. And whenever we're partnering with advancement or research, we're looking for new revenue streams, there's, IT has a lot of assets and knowledge which are leverable, leverageable, um, not only inside the institution, but externally as well. If the pandemic continues through 2021, institutions and students' financial problems will deepen maybe beyond recovery. On a hopeful note though, community colleges and other local institutions that have a long track record of involvement and support of their local city or region might find themselves stepping up to play an active role in advocating and raising funds for their survival. And now, onto the transform scenario. Some institutions plan to use the pandemic to launch or accelerate an institutional transformation agenda. The world around them has changed, and so must they. Institutions focused on these issues are starting with culture. Technology issues are heavily represented in the transform theme, but always in the context of technology's role and relationship with institutional priorities and ambitions. Students and their importance to the institution appear as an enrollment and recruitment issue in the transform scenario. As one panelist said, this issue is at the heart of what defines an institution and its ability to deliver on its mission. Institutions taking a transformative approach to enrollment and recruitment plan to make advanced uses of technologies and analytics to recruit students and to help them succeed. The transform scenario, of course, has a financial issue cost management. Institutions with transformational ambitions plan to make cost management a core objective of digital transformation. COVID is an accelerator. It jolted institutional leaders out of their ideation and slow marginal innovations into rapid and ongoing transformation. Resistance was futile or quickly overcome because the lives and the future of institutions was at stake. The COVID culture has been a culture of transformation, future thinking, and agility. It's primed institutions to continue in that mode, although hopefully much less frantically. Institutions don't do the hard work of innovation, people do. Transformation, agility, and future thinking will be up to people. And those people will begin 2021 exhausted and strung out by 2020. That's not the greatest mindset to take on transformative change. If the pandemic continues, institutional leaders will have no choice but to accelerate transformations they've got underway because economic pressures will become even more intense. And students will need more help than ever before to enroll, stay enrolled, and successfully complete their degrees. Institutions may restructure their credential offerings in collaboration with accreditation organizations to provide more flexible, 
lower cost credential opportunities. In a lot of ways, COVID was an accelerator. It, it made us do things that we, we just weren't getting around to, essentially. I also think that post-COVID, that change won't stop. I think there are other things in our society that are occurring that will continue to keep the momentum on change uh, in higher education, regardless of the presence of a vaccine and the end of COVID. The pandemic put colleges and universities on the path of digital transformation, a path that for many was unthinkable at the beginning of 2020. One of the biggest and perhaps most lasting changes from the pandemic has been to elevate the role of IT as a strategic partner and in many cases a strategy driver. IT leaders need to retain that role in 2021 and beyond to help institutions transform teaching, learning, research, administration, and their business models. That kind of change is what's needed for higher education to remain a public good and also survive. But the pace won't slow in 2021, and leaders will have many decisions to make and make quickly. Leaders will have to set forth a strong vision and rationale for transformation and make sure they have strong change management in place. And if the pandemic is not resolved in 2021, the technology process and policy choices and changes made in 2020 that were provisional and stopgap, they'll need to be adapted and improved for long-term use if that doesn't already happen in the latter parts of 2020. It really is like having robust, utilities, but not just dependable utilities, but ones that can innovate and transform how we do teaching, learning, and research at scale. My elevator pitch is IT isn't, shouldn't just be at the table in cases we should be leading the discussion. We should be leading the transformation of and pulling along faculty and students and researchers and how they do their work. Enterprise architecture can be limited to architecting technology solutions. But as an IT organization's enterprise architecture practice matures, CIOs will use it to align IT with strategic business outcomes and make the IT spend more effective for the institution. This is the level of enterprise architecture that institutional leaders focused on transformational change will aspire to. Institutions whose enterprise architectures depended on campus-based access had to develop architectures that enabled people to do work from anywhere. A work from anywhere organization provides a new opportunity for diversity and inclusion in the faculty, staff, and student populations. That is new, and that will last. As the pandemic continues, if it continues into 2021, reliance on IT capabilities and staff will continue. Institutions should try to avoid directly cutting IT budgets to afford additional investments to support remote or hybrid operations. IT budget managers will need to shift IT spending to areas that need it most and away from services and initiatives that can be retired or paused. We then need to get more cost effective and efficient. Um, we need to be able to create, a, create strategies and develop um, the, the technologies and architectures that make us even more efficient. Enrollment and recruitment practices and strategies are in a lot of flux now. A lot of what's happened over the last 10 to 15 years had kind of a kitchen sink approach. Most institutions have used new technologies in all kinds of ways, including analytics tools and techniques, targeted social media, and a richer online experience for applicants who can't get to campus. At this particular moment, sophisticated and evolved recruitment strategies supported by technology couldn't be more important. And institutions that have gone the kitchen sink route, well, they need to hone in on where to invest and focus. Students, and more often their families, are looking for metrics that point to the probability of their students' long-term personal success from attending a particular institution. Most institutions haven't yet figured out how best to seamlessly demonstrate success after college as part of their recruitment strategy beyond pointing to some charts and tables. If the pandemic continues, institutions will need to break through the campus visit barrier to successful recruiting. They'll have to get creative about using technology to replicate the intimacy and magic of a campus visit. 
Direct translation will probably be less successful than a reimagining of the social and emotional recruitment journey that capitalizes on digital strengths. Online-only institutions already know how to do this, and it'll be time for all institutions to master it. Institutions embracing digital transformation to guide cost management are working to increase agility and reduce redundancy. They're hoping to reduce the time it takes to change solutions and introduce services from years to months or even sometimes weeks. Effective techniques include reducing customizations, selecting one solution that's good enough for most instead of several that are ideal for it, and standardizing on one set of solutions to provide a seamless, streamlined user experience, as well as a more maintainable architecture. The pandemic has helped institutional leaders recognize the ways in which technology can directly benefit their work. They're more aware now of the ongoing investments and effective digital infrastructure needs. Leadership commitment to digital transformation is essential because it's not a one and done. Digital transformation is a series of initiatives and higher education is still very early in its journey. And if the pandemic is not resolved in 2021, IT leaders have been provisioning students, faculty, and staff for remote learning and work. There's no clear funding source or strategy, especially for institutions that haven't prioritized among in-person, hybrid, and fully online models. This is just not sustainable at current or inevitably reduced funding levels. You know, we've got six modes right now that are of teaching, which is not anything we've ever had before. We have six modes of teaching and the instructor can pick any one of those six. And so um, that means that maybe our traditional classrooms um, aren't necessarily, don't need to be as, as equipped as they used to be in the past. And so we can actually reduce some cost and shift some costs by saying, okay, we're gonna have fewer of the traditional kinds of classrooms and shift those funding so that we can keep some of those new modes of teaching because some of those new modes of teaching are actually the way the students do want to learn. And now as we close, I have a few thoughts to help you prepare for 2021 and how the Educause IT issues might help. Binary thinking is the fallacy that any question has one of only two possible answers. If the pandemic has taught us anything in 2020, it's the perils of binary thinking. The pandemic presented a risk that needed nuanced management. Not every location was a hotspot. Few institutions were either completely shut down or 100% open and operating normally. Regardless of the decisions made at the institutional level, individual students, faculty, and staff had to make their own individual decisions about where to learn or teach or work based on their own personal set of risks and circumstances. The pandemic has demonstrated the usefulness of online learning, not as the alternative to classroom learning, but as a modality to infuse into pedagogy. The HyFlex option is popular these days because it gives both instructors and students a lot of flexibility about when to learn and how to learn class by class instead of course by course or program by program. HyFlex will certainly be succeeded by something even richer and better. XR technologies and artificial intelligence are just two examples of maturing innovations that will provide options that make today's digital learning and teaching options seem as primitive as overhead projectors or chalkboards. Binary thinking suggests that the application of technology to teaching and learning is good or bad, effective or ineffective. Well, that kind of mindset ignores reality and it leads to poor choices. Work location also needs to become a non-binary issue. Staff want a kind of high-flex working environment. Managers and HR leaders need to consider how to structure such working conditions in ways that increase both staff engagement and productivity and maybe even reduce expenses. Don't forget our third assumption. Very few institutions will see themselves within a single scenario. Our scenarios describe archetypal approaches to pandemic recovery. You'll most probably find your institution is across two or maybe even all three of the scenarios. So consider the issues that best describe the approach you think your institution might most likely take to shape its post-pandemic future. And then ask how the future might turn out differently if your institution took one of the other approaches. Using correlational analysis, we found patterns in how respondents chose issues within and across scenarios. For example, 
People who rated the Restore version of cost management particularly highly or lowly for their institution were also significantly more likely to rate the Evolve version of equitable access to education highly or lowly. Now, as we close, I want to mention two themes that came up again and again in the panel's conversations. The first is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Two issues hint at it, affordability and digital equity in the Restore scenario, and equitable access to education in the Evolve scenario. But the panelists also felt that the diversity, equity, and inclusion as an issue, or DEI, is so important that it transcends all the themes. Ensuring equity of access and outcomes for higher education, having a workforce that's diverse in many, many ways and that can reflect the diversity of our students and faculty and citizens, and fostering inclusion so no one feels marginalized or maltreated. We need to keep these basic human rights in mind and in deed as we lead and manage technology professionals and as we work with and support students, staff, faculty, and the community that we work and live in. And the second theme is burnout. We all feel it, and there's no sign that things will slow or ease up. Let's listen to our final panelist's perspective on that from Dave Seidel. A lot of institutions are going to be fighting an existential struggle before they fight a making things better struggle. I'm seeing it already across our state. I think at the same time, uh, the, the marathon question is, is a big one. Uh, I've been telling my staff for three months that we need to treat this like a marathon, but we keep sprinting because we keep running in, in things that we need to sprint for. Nothing that happened during 2020 was particularly novel or surprising. It's been a year when many trends and risks accelerated. COVID has vaulted us several years ahead in digital transformation, the adoption of online learning, the need to replace business models, public scrutiny of the costs and value of higher education, and agility in decision-making. Racial injustice, our current political polarization, and the unfair and uneven impact of the pandemic on people of different ethnicities and means have forced a broader and deeper awareness of the many inequities in our world, particularly in the United States. None of these facts is new or were hidden. Our current crises shine a harsh light on our challenges, but that brings an opportunity for our organizations to align with a new clarity of purpose and sense of urgency. 2021 will require the higher education industry and its leaders to answer the difficult questions and start moving forward to emerge from this pandemic by restoring, evolving, and transforming. Thank you very, very much for coming to this talk. And now I think there are a bunch of questions in the chat and in the Q&A. Jamie, what questions do people have? Yes, Susan, we have a lot of great uh, questions coming at you. Our first one is, um, do we want to get back to where we were from a tech view? Well, I think we want to get back to where we were from a tech funding view. Uh, uh, you know, certainly a, a lot of institutions have seen their technology budgets cut. And, you know, the, the panelists, when they talked about, uh, uh, about the restore uh, scenario, they acknowledged that, of course, there is no going back. And yet, from a financial perspective, certainly the institution will want to go back. Another thing that they talked about related to the restore scenario was uh, regarding information security. Um, and several panelists mentioned the fact that information security threats seem to subside quite a bit in the initial weeks of the pandemic. They have certainly intensified. And, uh, and, and so there, there's a real need to protect those. And I think, I think perhaps getting back to the uh, information security protection status, acknowledging the fact that so much uh, that, that our borders don't end at our campus anymore. Um, and so how do, we, how do we really restore good information security um, among 
all our locations. Next question. Yes. Um, so we had two different views in the Q&A around current and future IT staffing levels. Uh, Susan, we re recently ran a quick poll on IT leadership. Do you have any results handy that you would like to share with the audience? Sure, I do. Uh, first of all, you know, I think I just said uh, uh, the median budget uh, change since the pandemic has started this year at institutions was a 10% decrease in IT budgets. That's more at some institutions and some institutions have had no, no decreases at all, no changes at all. And a lucky, I think 3% uh, have had um, IT budget increases. And of course, we know that the biggest source of costs in budgets tends to be staff. But what we've seen so far in the way that IT leaders and institutions have, have, have tried to accommodate the need to spend less is that they have tried to accommodate cost cuts that have tried to preserve staffing levels. So doing things like freezing compensation, travel bans, professional development decreases, um, and uh, um, uh, sorry, um, uh, compensation level, uh, and, and then uh, delaying planned work, and then uh, hiring freezes as well. Those, those have been the strategies, all really trying to preserve the headcount in IT, because we all know that uh, technology has been so critically important to being able to accommodate the pandemic. What's next? Um, so we have a popular question. If the assumption about the pandemic being resolved in 21 ends up not being realized, do you think the scenarios will be dramatically different? Well, I, I think that they will be dramatically um, more intense. Uh, so just as the pandemic has, uh, has, has accelerated a lot of trends that already existed, I think that those trends will continue to, to move more quickly if the pandemic is not resolved. So I think that we're gonna see that the institutions that are really struggling financially, those struggles will deepen and become much, much more severe. Uh, the other thing is that I think that the need to move transformatively with technology will increase. And these are not just my opinions. Um, the, these are the opinions of, of the IT issues panelists when, when we interviewed them. Um, and then another common theme if the pandemic is not resolved was that the need to support students who are uh, at, at greatest financial risk, who have the worst broadband insecurity issues, that those needs will deepen and institutions' ability to support them will, uh, will, will probably lessen um, because we will all be in, in greater financial uh, difficulties. Next question. Um, could you, our audience would like you to speak more to the issue of burnout and how we might overcome it. That's a great, great question, uh, you know, and it's one that, that we deal with here as Educause staff as well. And from, from my, my conversations with people uh, and, and from what I have read, certainly uh, Dave Seidel's advice, uh, if, if you're a manager, really do encourage your staff to treat this as a marathon, which means you can't run at full speed all the time or else you really will get burned out. Recognizing that we are all burned out um, by, by our family circumstances if we're having to homeschool children um, and, and, and you know, financial difficulties. And even life has just become incredibly bland um, at, 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 you know, for, for, for all of us, I think. And so I think the key word is to embrace the power of vulnerability to accept our own vulnerability, to accept the vulnerability of all of those around us, not to judge, not to get frustrated as easily as we might, and as leaders to recognize and also to display our own vulnerability. And certainly vulnerability as an important leadership quality is becoming more and more important. Jamie, that's how about have another question? Yeah, that's a great segue into this uh, next question. Um, seems like institutions that try to follow all three paths, uh, restore and another, one restores and other evolves, will be in trouble. Are we seeing institutional leaders making this a leadership moment? I think this has to be a leadership moment. And, 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 and yet you can mix and match across scenarios 
if you do them in a coordinated way um, across the institution. So certainly, as I said, Restore is, is so much about restoring the financial uh, security and the financial position before the pandemic. Um, and and, and when, when you look at transformation and you think, you think about the ways in which transformation might move across various scenarios, the, the evolved scenario is really about evolving the student experience to where it's, it is today back, rather than back to where it was before. So we know with digital transformation that transformation is, is not something that you, you can do and say, we're going to transform this entire institution, everything at once. You really need to pick and identify what is your, what, what is your transformational priority and what transformational journey will you go on initially? So the transformational journeys have to start with culture, which is why institutional culture was the number one issue. And then you really need to think about what's your first transformation play. In some cases, it might be an evolved play. It might be around simplifying and, and optimizing uh, your uses of technology so that you don't have so many different options for people and so many different solutions. You might focus your transformation journey on the student experience, which was so prominent in the evolved scenario. And so I think as long as, as long as leadership is really coordinating and aligning, you can mix and match across the scenarios. And that is indeed what we're seeing. Any other questions, Jamie? Yeah, um, has COVID inspired more collaboration between institutions or are we turning inward? Uh, collaboration is not the most uh, cost is not on this cost management list. Well, actually, it is uh, the the cost uh, management issue number five under transform is really focused on. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, the uh, issue number five under under evolve is really focused on uh, on on transform. Uh, excuse me. Um, issue number five under Evolve is really focused on partnerships and collaborations and using those as ways to get more funding with, uh, to the institution, uh, collaborating across institutions as well. And in fact, it seemed as if our panelists talked more about collaboration and partnership this year as they thought about the issues, as they address them, than, than I've ever seen them talk about in, in the 10 years I've been doing this project. So we decided that we were gonna create a separate additional article in addition to the top 10 IT issues article about partnership and collaboration and about the panelists advice across all of the scenarios. And you'll be able to read that article as well as the full article on the IT issues on Monday when we release all of our issues and, and all the resources. And that will be uh, from mid early to, to, to mid to late morning, depending on what time zone you are. And, and that's all in the US time zones. Anything else? Yes, um, we have, there are lots of discussions in chat, social media about individual and institutional ability to transform due to sheer exhaustion seems that an enabler of our ability to come out the other side is dependent on our ability to achieve balance. Do you have thoughts on strategies on how to achieve? Um, I, think, I, I think that it's actually easier to achieve balance if you do have, 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 have vulnerability as a value and if you do acknowledge that we are all human. You know, I, it looks like I'm in a studio right now, but I'm sitting here in my family room and my little puppy is on the couch next to me. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, uh, it, I'm, I'm here, uh, you know, with, with all of my, all, all of the madness of my life surrounding me. And I know all of you are too. So that's part of it. But another big part of it is that again, this really is a real leadership moment. And so I think institutions that have, leadership that can focus and inspire and inspire in ways that don't seem blue sky and absolutely insane, like how are we ever gonna do that? But inspire in the kind of ways that enable all of us to not only see the future that we're creating, but also see and understand our roles in it. 
and to say, yes, I can play that role. I think that that's going to be very, very important to avoiding burnout. So on the one hand, inspire and inspire in a way that you can really see the role that you can play and accept it. And on the other hand, don't ask too much of people and acknowledge that we're all struggling right now. So that, that's my advice. Well, Susan, I think that that's uh, wonderful advice and also a great way to end this uh, very informative and uh, awesome session. So thank you, Susan, and thank you all for joining us. And please don't forget to stop by the virtual exhibit hall.